10% of all diabetes cases are type 1. Patients with type 1 diabetes will need to take insulin injections for the rest of their life. But hey, we don't have to do that often. They must also ensure proper blood glucose levels by carrying out regular blood tests and following a special diet. Between 2001 and 2009, the prevalence of type 1 diabetes among the under-20s in the United States rose 23%, according to Search for Diabetes in Youth data uh, by the CDC. The body does not produce enough insulin, that's type 2 diabetes, for proper function, or the cells in the body do not react to, to insulin, that is, insulin resistance. Approximately 90% of all cases of diabetes worldwide are of this type. This is type 2 diabetes. Some people may be able to control their type 2 diabetes symptoms by losing weight. We'll talk more about, about that. Following a healthy diet, doing plenty of exercise, and monitoring their blood sugar levels, however, Type 2 diabetes is typically a progressive disease. It gradually gets worse, and the patient will probably end up uh, having to take insulin, usually in tablet form. So if you don't take care of type 2 diabetes, you will eventually get type 1 diabetes. So it must be taken care of now. Overweight and obese people have a much higher risk of type 2 diabetes compared to those with healthy body weight. People with a lot of fat, also known as central obesity, belly fat or abdominal uh, obesity, are especially at risk. Being overweight or obese causes the body to release chemicals that can destabilize the body's cardiovascular and metabolic systems. So these chemicals need to, uh, to, to be uh, fixed. Being overweight, physically, inact uh, physically inactive, and eating wrong food all contribute to our risk of developing type 2 diabetes. Drinking just one can of nine diet soda per day can raise our risk of developing type 2 diabetes by 22%. That can. Researchers from Imperial College in London reported in the journal Diabetologia that scientists believe that the important, the impact of sugary soft drinks on diabetes risk may be a direct one, rather than simply an influence on body weight. So it's a direct influence that we get from the, 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 the soft drink. Uh, so, uh, I, I, I tell people, the best thing is to just not consume those, uh, those sodas. Um, of Middle Eastern, African, or South, South Asian descent also have a higher um, risk of developing the disease. Men whose testo testosterone levels are low have been found to have a higher risk of developing type 2 diabetes. Researchers from the University of Edinburgh, Scotland. Good. Now, look, I want to encourage all of you, those that didn't go for a walk today go tomorrow amen, amen. now here's the thing <laughs> um, there is no magic when it comes to health health you you no pill can ever take the place of an exercise there's no doctor under heaven who can give you a pill that will replace exercise. 
There is no one who is said to be healthy unless they exercise. If you don't exercise, you will get sick. It's just a matter of time. Amen? So let me encourage you. I want to see more hands tomorrow. <laughs> Amen? Uh, uh, I want to see more hands of, of those that exercise tomorrow. I, ha I will answer a few questions here before we, before we start. Uh, what meat supplements are recommended? Uh, there are no meat supplements recommended. They, there's just other food besides meat. Amen? Huh? Tofu. Tofu, is, tofu is, is, is a different food. It just has a lot of protein, a lot of other nutrients. But Nothing can replace meat, really. Amen? Amen? Meat is its own thing. Uh, but f I know what this means. <laughs> you are saying, I, I suspect this is meaning that what we get in meat, what else do we get that from? Where else do we get that from, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, tofu. <laughs> beans um, milk no 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 not milk Ch rice whole grain rice um, most people worry about protein and protein is the least thing to worry about you never hear I don't know maybe maybe you have I haven't yet heard somebody t that, that was said to be protein deficient. <laughs> Ever heard of any? <laughs> yeah. And yet, everybody worries about where do I get my protein? You must get your protein. And then that's a justification for what? For eating meat. No. There is protein in all food. Most of the foods will have protein. As long as there's food, you will not lack protein. Unless you're in the Darfur region in the Sudan, there's no food. Then you're going to lack protein. Amen? So that's the least thing to worry about. What, what can we use instead of deodorants? Uh, you, can, you can use... Uh, um, essential oils or uh, anybody can help. Anybody can answer this one. Yes. yes. There's natural deodorants. They don't even have perfume. They have like Tom's or the name makes one. You can buy it at any grocery store. Yeah. And there's another brand name too, but I can't remember what it's called. Look, at, look for stuff that you can eat. Anything that yes. you can eat, that's what you need to put in your and body. You, you cannot eat it. Right. right. Yeah. Yeah. Unless it's medicinal purpose before all time. That's right. Okay. Now this is. I'm scheduled for hip replacement due to arthritis. Yes. Can I do anything to prevent it? Yes. Uh, you can treat the weak. <coughs> go on a, on a good protocol for, for arthritis treatment. And uh, hopefully you won't need the, the hip re replacement. Uh, hopefully. Um, there, there, there's always a way before you get uh, your, yourself cut. There, there are always ways before. Uh, but this one, uh, I would need to to have a little more information. We'll wait for you to come back to us. That's okay. Take your time on that one. Okay. What is a good replacement for energy? That is coffee, tea, and others alike. Um, if you want energy, you eat the way we talked about the other day. You eat the fruits first, the grains, and then the nuts. Eat a big meal in the morning, you will 
feel a lot of energy and you won't need a snack. One of the worst things you can do is to eat in between the meals. Uh, and when you eat well, you will not need uh, to eat in between meals. Yeah. So there's, uh, there's one more difficult question here. Now, what is the Christian stance on in vitro fertilization? Are there any ethical, biblical implications one should consider? In example, one has tried conventional ways, changing diets and other options already. Um, in vitro fertilization. Uh, you want to look at it on, on a personal basis and look at what are the ethical considerations um, that, that you want to, to, to see. Now, uh, the process of having uh, the baby done from your ovaries, that's what they do for in vitro, um, and putting it in a test tube, then when it's fertilized, it's put back into you, and then it grows. Uh, from what I know, uh, it can be done. You can do that. But it's really, I don't know any, un unless pastor or elder or anybody knows what, what might be a biblical reason to not do that. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I don't. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 So I don't know any any that might prevent. However, we also have before trying this, there are ways of having people make babies who have failed to make babies. So, the best way, in my view, is to try that first and uh, you know we can talk before before I go uh, so that <clears throat> we can try the natural ways of having a baby in the normal process by God's grace amen so today's lesson is it, it, this lesson here is really as I was looking at the notes I have, it's, it's long. <laughs> it's very long, and so I will l cut it in, in between, and I'll just probably, just ab abruptly, because the major issues are, are very, very simple, very simple, and we can just say that in a few words and go, and then, you know, but it is a major disease, diabetes. Um, many people are, are suffering from diabetes. Um, but about uh, some years ago, my mom was diagnosed with diabetes. <coughs> Excuse me. When she was diagnosed with diabetes, at that time I had no idea. Then I went to the general conference in... Uh, in 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 um, what what you call that place St. Louis, and then I saw in the boots there was the lifestyle centers of America, and I got a video series of several videos that had to do with diabetes, and. That those videos were costing maybe uh, uh, over three hundred dollars uh, to just buy those. So I bought those for her. I never really looked at myself because I it, it was for her, and um, she took them home. Uh, at that time, we were together in in the U.S. So when she went, uh, I don't know if she really watched or. She ever did what was there. 
But uh, then I came to Canada and joined the medical missionary program. Remember I told you I was already a vegetarian for a long time before that. And I had no idea why a person would not drink milk or why a person should not eat eggs or something. So I learned a lot of stuff. And immediately as I learned, I called mom. I said, now you do this, do that, do this, do that. And now she listened and she followed. And uh, after a few weeks, she said she went to the doctor and the doctor says, but you don't, you don't have any diabetes. I said, what? So this thing works? So it, it, it works. So uh, this is what we're going to talk about today. The sweet killer. Uh, diabetes is a sweet, sweet killer. Diabetes often refers to by doctors as diabetes mellitus. Uh, describes a group of metabolic diseases in which the person has high blood glucose, that's blood sugar, either because insulin production is inadequate or because the body cells do not respond properly to insulin or both. Three types of, of diabetes. Type 1 diabetes, the body does not produce insulin. Some people may refer to this type as insulin-dependent diabetes juvenile diabetes or early onset diabetes people usually develop type 1 diabetes before their 40th year often in early adulthood or teenage years and even as as little little children type 1 diabetes is nowhere near as common as type 2 diabetes Approximately 10% of all diabetes cases are type 1. Patients with type 1 diabetes will need to take insulin injections for the rest of their life. But hey, we don't have to do that often. They must also ensure proper blood gl glucose levels by carrying out regular blood tests and following a special diet. Between 2001 and 2009, the prevalence of type 1 diabetes among the under 20s in the United States rose 23%, according to Search for Diabetes in Youth data uh, by the CDC. The body does not produce enough insulin, that's type 2 diabetes, for proper function, or the cells in the body do not react to, to insulin, that is, insulin resistance. Approximately 90% of all cases of diabetes worldwide are of this type. This is type 2 diabetes. Some people may be able to control their type 2 diabetes symptoms by losing weight. We'll talk more about, about that. Following a healthy diet, doing plenty of exercise, and monitoring their blood sugar levels, however, Type 2 diabetes is typically a progressive disease. It gradually gets worse, and the patient will probably end up uh, having to take insulin, usually in tablet form. So if you don't take care of type 2 diabetes, you will eventually get type 1 diabetes. So it must be taken care of now. Overweight and obese people have a much higher risk of type 2 diabetes compared to those with healthy body weight. People with a lot of fat, also known as central obesity, belly fat or abdominal uh, obesity, are especially at risk. Being overweight or obese causes the body to release chemicals that can destabilize the body's cardiovascular and metabolic systems. So these chemicals need to, uh, to, to be uh, fixed. Being overweight, physically, inact uh, physically inactive, and eating wrong foods all contribute 
to our risk of developing type 2 diabetes. Drinking just one can of non-diet soda per day can raise our risk of developing type 2 diabetes by 22%. That can. Researchers from Imperial College in London reported in the journal Diabetologia that scientists believe that the impact of sugary soft drinks on diabetes risk may be a direct one rather than simply an influence on body weight. So it's a direct influence that we get from the, 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 the soft drink. Uh, so uh, I, I, I tell people the best thing is to just not consume those, uh, those sodas. Um, when you consume a soda pop drink, it lowers your immune system for the next six hours. So if disease attacks at that time, you are more vulnerable to getting attacked by even a flu, right? Because your immune system is very low because of the high content of sugar. The risk of developing type 2 diabetes is also greater as we get older. Experts are not completely sure why, but they say that as we age, we tend to put on weight and become less physically active. Those with a close relative who had type 2 diabetes people of Middle Eastern, African, or South, South Asian descent also have a higher risk of developing the disease. Men whose testosterone levels are low have been found to have a higher risk of developing type 2 diabetes. Researchers from the University of Edinburgh, Scotland, say that low testosterone levels are linked to insulin resistance. So one, one always uh, needs to, 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 to make this balance of hormones. The male, the testosterone must always be higher. Uh, the, me, the, the female have uh, their hormones too, uh, that must be higher, estrogen, right? Now, um, if, if we had all the time in the world, we would do, do other lessons and talk about estrogen more and all that kind of stuff. But we, we, there, is a, there, is a, there is a herb called maca. Anybody know maca? Okay. Maca will also help balance your hormones. Like people with uh, this problem for males uh, and people with uh, hormonal imbalance, uh, even, even especially the women, uh, even people with thyroid issues, it will help with, with that. Gestational diabetes. This type affects females during pregnancy. Some women have very high levels of glucose in their blood and their bodies are unable to produce enough insulin to transport all, uh, all of the glucose into their cells, resulting in progressively rising levels of glucose. The majority of gestational diabetes patients can control their diabetes with exercise and diet. Between 10% and 20% of them will need to take some kind of blood glucose controlling medications. Undiagnosed or uncontrolled gestational diabetes can raise the risk of complications during childbirth. The baby may be bigger than she or he should be. Scientists from the National Institutes of Health and Harvard University found that women whose diets before becoming pregnant were high in animal fat and cholesterol had a higher risk for gestational diabetes. 
compared to their counterparts whose diets were low in cholesterol and in animal fat. Again, these are the culprits. Animal fat. Animal fat. It's always there. Uh, when, when disease is there, this thing is there. Pre-diabetes, what is it? The vast majority of patients with type 2 diabetes initially had pre-diabetes. Their blood glucose levels were higher than normal, but not high enough to merit a diabetes diagnosis. The cells in the body are becoming resistant to insulin. Studies have indicated that even at the pre-diabetes stage, some damage to the circulatory system and the heart may already have occurred. Diabetes is... Now, you see, when they, when they say the heart and the system have already been damaged, this is because diabetes takes maybe 10 years before it, re, it, it surfaces. So it would have started a long time ago. And so what you want to do is to nip it in the bud, as they say in English. Nip it in the bud, right? Before it attacks, make sure it, it's gone. Diabetes is classed as a metabolism disorder. Metabolism refers to the way our bodies use digested food for energy and growth. Most of what we eat is broken down into glucose. Glucose is a form of sugar in the blood. It is the principal source of fuel in our bodies. When our food is digested, the glucose makes it its way into our bloodstream. Our cells use the glucose for energy and for growth. However, glucose cannot enter our cells without insulin being present. Insulin makes it possible for our cells to take in the glucose. Insulin is a hormone that is produced by the pancreas. After eating, the pancreas automatically releases an adequate quantity of insulin to move the glucose present in our blood into the cells. As soon as glucose enters the cells, blood glucose levels drop. Does that make sense? Is it making sense? You're, you're quiet tonight. <laughs> yeah, this is what I was, I was, this is so academic. And I wanted to not use the, the PowerPoint tonight, but uh, I, I used it anyhow because it, it's too academic. But I'll try and uh, eventually just explain in, in in, in simplicity. A person with diabetes has a condition in which the quantity of glucose in the blood is too elevated. Uh, this is the glucose. Is, is too much in the blood. Then you have hyperglycemia. This is because the, the body either does not produce enough insulin, produces no insulin, or has cells that do not respond properly to the insulin that the pancreas produces. You see, when they say the, the blood has too much sugar, eh? doctors in the old days used, used to, to taste, to drink your urine, to taste if it's sweet. If it's sweet, then you are diabetic. How, how would you have loved to be a doctor? <laughs> they used to, to take a sip and then they, they, they know, okay, if it's sweet. That's why it's called diabetes. The result in too much glucose building up in the blood uh, stream, this excess blood glucose eventually passes out of the body in urine. This is the one that they, they would taste. So even though the blood has plenty of glucose, the cells are not getting it for their essential energy and growth requirements. So the blood is getting inside, but it's not being absorbed into the cells of the body. 
So it just goes via the urine, it's gone. How to determine whether you have diabetes, uh, pre-diabetes or neither? Well, this is uh, uh, just go, go, go get a test from the doctor. You, you, you will know. Now, why is it called diabetes mellitus? Diabetes comes from Greek, and it means a siphon. Aretas the Cappadocian, a Greek physician during the second century AD, he discovered, he described patients who were passing too much water uh, like a siphon. The word became diabetes from the English adoption of the medieval Latin diabetes. In 1675, Thomas Willis added Miletus to the term, although it is commonly referred to simply as diabetes. Male in Latin means <clears throat> honey. The urine and the blood of people with diabetes has excess glucose, that's excess sugar, and glucose is sweet like honey. Diabetes mellitus could literally mean siphoning off sweet water. So that's what it means. If all who would eat at regular periods, not tasting anything between meals, they would be ready for their meals and would find a pleasure in eating that would repay them for their effort. Remember yesterday I was saying you, you will love food if you eat the right way. <clears throat> uh, that's what that statement is attesting to. Regularity in eating should be carefully observed. Nothing should be eaten between meals. No confectionaries, nuts, fruits or foods of any kind. Irregularities in eating destroy the healthful tone of the digestive organs to the detriment of health and cheerfulness. Remember, the cheerfulness is gone when you are sick. So you don't want that. And when the children come to the table, they do not relish wholesome food. Their appetites crave that which is hurtful for them. Now, if... if one of the, the reasons for children refusing, most children in North America don't want to eat vegetables, right? Why is that? Here's the reason. And Sister White gave us that reason. When we eat in between meals and, uh, and, and, and children have been eating all day, right? Uh, they, they cry, Mama, I want uh, a chocolate. Mama gives a chocolate. You know? Uh, Mama, I want this, this, and that. Give her a donut. <laughs> now when they come to the table, they are full. And, and, and their taste is not accustomed to vegetables because sweet and natural don't go together. The natural and the sweet uh, are, are not compatible. And, and for a child, it's like, why do we have to eat vegetables? Uh, we, we went for, for, for a, a seminar at one church in Ontario, in Toronto. And after the presentations, one lady said to us that she raised her son as a vegan. Right? She raised him as a vegan. No meat, no animal product, no sugar whatsoever. And when, when the son had a little, probably between five and eight, somebody gave him a sweet. And when he ate, he put it straight into the mouth. When he tasted that sweet, it tasted bitter. He had to spit it out. You know why? His taste buds were natural. Most taste buds are spoiled by the food we eat. And the good news I have is that taste can be acquired and taste 
can be unacquired. Amen? It takes three weeks to get used to any kind of food. See, if I go to India today and I find that they are eating certain food that if I eat and taste, I'm like, ha, huh, I don't think so. But if I know in my mind that this food is good for me and I keep eating it, keep eating it, in three weeks, it will be okay. It becomes normal. It happened to me, you know, black strap molasses. Yes. My friend, when, when, I, when we were training as medical missionaries, eh? Uh, my friend gave, it, gave, gave me uh, black strep molasses and I put it on, on bread. And I tasted it. I'm like, what? <laughs> I had never eaten black strep molasses, you know? And it tasted no good. No. No, you know. But now I have a bottle. I go, you see, because I, taste is acquired. So, even though you, you might have a sweet tooth, if you train your taste buds, you can go back to normal again. Amen? This is called the sweet killer. Elevated levels of blood glucose, hyperglycemia, lead to spillage of glucose into the urine. Hence the term sweet urine. Normally blood glucose levels are tightly controlled by insulin. A hormone produced by the pancreas, insulin lowers uh, blood gl glucose levels. Diabetes, let's start from here. Diabetes is a chronic medical condition, meaning that although it can be controlled, it, it, it lasts a lifetime. But you don't have to have diabetes for, for, for life. Um, insulin and glucose. Thank you. Thank you so much. May your days be increased. <laughs> Let me give you a scenario. Forget the notes. If, if you were given... Um, a plate of, um, say, uh, four apples, right? And another one with one bar of chocolate. Which one do you think will satisfy you? <laughs> huh? <laughs> huh? <laughs> Okay, let's vote. <laughs> the apple. Huh? Okay, let me, let me tell you. When, you. when you eat an apple, right? <clears throat> no, no, let, let's start with the, with, the, with, the, with, the, with the chocolate. When you eat the chocolate, it will be sweet and nice. Many people love chocolate. It will be nice to eat. It will also shoot your blood sugar quickly right right up and in no time it will also what drop if you eat the the the, the apples it it will not shoot your blood sugar quickly but it will gradually rise your blood sugar nicely and it will not shoot it down quickly. Why? Because of the roughage, the fiber, right? The fiber has a way of controlling that blood sugar levels to be released slowly, but surely. And then you have energy for a longer time. If you eat sweets and chocolate, you, as a diabetic, you are just not doing yourself a, a favor at all. So the key to a diabetic is to eat foods 
that are rich in fiber. Even fruits, a diabetic can eat fruits. Amen? Most people say, um, uh, the, the, I, I was told not to eat fruits. But uh, one author, um, the author of the book, uh, um, the books, the, the Encyclopedia of, of Foods and Their Healing Power, you know the, the, those books, those yellow books, um, he says, many have uh, decided that they're not eating fruits, but that is an error. You, you, a diabetic can tolerate fruits, just not dried fruits, because dried fruits have too much sugar, and just not too much of the fruits. You see the picture? You can even eat mangoes as a diabetic, and you still, you'll be okay. The issue... <laughs> I'm sorry? Why does a chocolate or a diabetic always carry a chocolate bar with them? If you take some attack and diabetic home or something like that, they a, say to give them a chocolate bar. <laughs> that's a good question. That's true. Yeah. That's where people have diabetes. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's because they, when, when their blood sugar low is low, then they must eat something right away or they'll faint. Yes. So they need something to eat. Now, what they don't realize is they shouldn't eat chocolate. And they should eat an apple instead or something that is uh, natural. Right? That's right. That's right. That's right. And a diabetic should... Always eat something before going for a walk. Like when you go for your exercise, before going, eat something so that you are not going to have your blood sugar low and then you faint. Right? So it's, it's like when insulin, when, <clears throat> when, when you have a lot of blessings, amen? Did I hear that? a lot of blessings. What happens is the fat closes the, 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 the cells. So when insulin comes, trying to get into the blood cells, it finds the door locked so it can't get in. It's like when you get to a door and there's bubble gum on the door. You can't put the key. So the door can't open. So then the reason um, um, in order to alleviate that you need to go for a walk. Exercise. Exercise will melt the fat and when the fat is gone then insulin has a way into the cells. And the, blood, the, 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 the diabetic starts functioning normal. Just make sure to eat um, uh, what you call uh, good fiber food, natural fiber food, and not too much sugar because you are already sweet. You don't want too much sweet. Amen? Amen. So, um, um, here is, 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 is the problem for my people. My people, where we come from. We grow, we grow up, our staple food is what? Sadza. Cornmeal. You know, cornmeal, eh? Uh, when you go to Kenya, they have a real thick one. Hard, hard one. I always laugh at my Kenyan friends. A at least our, our, ours in Southern Africa is a little bit light. But nonetheless, 
too much of sadza will give you diabetes. Yeah. Yeah. Because you see the, the sadza is converted into what? Into glucose. The same thing happens to rice. Like when you have white rice. It's, it's sugar. So you have so much sugar in the system and you're not exercising. That sugar is not working. Do you see the picture? You are going to develop into diabetes eventually. So you need to, to have less of, of those starchy foods. Amen? And, 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 and diabetes will be so gone. A diabetic should eat more raw food, more fruits, raw food, whole grain um, uh, food, and, and nuts. And diabetes is, is, is history. Amen? So this is the summary of diabetes. Uh, is there any comments or question? I think we, we still have a little time, right? Do we? Yeah. Yes, sir. Right. That's a very powerful question. I thought you would not ask hard questions. <laughs> the same process happens to, 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 to thin people. Yeah. Yes. Elder, you want to answer? No, I'm just saying that, I mean, uh, being thin mm -hmm. or being fat right. doesn't necessarily mean that you're healthy. Right. Yeah, a lot of people will eat a lot of bad things. In Shona, I say, "Aka kuvarira mukati." You know, he, he <laughs> he's he's uh, injured inside, right? He, you don't see it from outside. from outside, but inside is not good because of the the things that they are eating. The same process even to thin people. And sometimes uh, when diabetes progresses, you become thinner. So if a person has been big and they're diabetic and, and, and they don't do anything, eventually they'll become thinner. Yes. Yeah. And that, um, so by the time we see them, we wonder, ah, but how come they have diabetes? But they used to be what? Yeah. And also, uh, um, an item just lost <laughs> from, my <laughs> from my hard disk. Uh, yes, sir. I'm sorry? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh brother <laughs> now when you are diabetic eh, you also run the risk of other diseases like kidney disease uh, heart disease um, um, liver issues retinal whatever issues um, so Diabetes must be taken care of now. And you know how it starts? To take care of it. Tomorrow morning, go for a walk. You have taken care of diabetes. Amen? And you won't have to worry about it by God's grace. There's something that was a little bit of interest to me there when you were saying about lower testosterone. Mm -hmm. You were saying diabetes causes, causes that? 
No. Low testosterone causes diabetes. Low testosterone? Yeah. Uh, how? That's just a question. Oh, man. I, th that, that one is a hard one for me right now. I don't know. I don't know. But uh, I have to, to think that... Um, no, I can't come with the answer right now. Yes, sir. Testosterone is like a building block. Right. It's, it, it circulates throughout the body. It, it repairs muscles. It, it repairs bodily uh, functions. Anything that, need, that is damaged, testosterone is really good for, for helping to repair. So I think lack of it, your parts of your body just aren't getting the, the repairs that they need. That's right. That's right. That's right. And, and it, it's mainly diet. The things you eat or don't eat. Yeah. Some, some of them will increase your testosterone. Others will lower it. And uh, when testosterone is low, you, you also run the risk of prostate cancer. And uh, prostate cancer. Yeah. Yeah. The process, I have no idea how, how, how that happens. But that's something for me to look for later. Amen? Amen. Any other question? Yes, Mama. Yes. Uh huh. Spices. Um, spices. It depends what kind of spices. Um, spices will affect your digestive tract, will make it inflamed. And so if, 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 if the good spice, if you are to use a spice, is cayenne pepper. One of the, some of the bad spices are black pepper, uh, nutmeg, Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Nutmeg. I knew that. I knew that was coming. <laughs> so, yeah. <clears throat> See, there are culinary, culinary spices those that are usually just food. What you don't want is to try not mix too many of them at the same time. Uh, um, you want to, to, to just maybe choose one or two if you have too, too many. But if you are treating a disease, right? If you are sick, sometimes the mixture of herbs will bring concoctions that are very potent to heal something. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Right. Now, I'll, t I'll tell you, <clears throat> in light of what you're saying, I, I, I tell people that when the Lord comes, it will be only be then that we will realize that this world 
was operating on a big line, a huge one. There are many things that we have been told and taught that are just not true. M many things. Yeah. Uh, one of them is that you need milk to have calcium, right? Yeah. Yeah. Everybody knows that, right? But that's one big lie, and there are many such lies. So um, sometimes we need to take our, our time to learn. And, I, and I'm still learning a lot. I, I'm so far from what I think I should be. <laughs> I, I don't know a lot of things. Um, yeah. That's right. I mean, only human beings would see killing of self about milk. Yeah. 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 Only human on, only only humans of all the mammals <laughs> keep drinking milk after after being wind. That comes from doctors. Huh? That that comes from doctors because only when I came to Canada and having my son. Yeah. And if you don't, you're doing it wrong. Yeah. Now I'm pregnant, because we need to drink our milk because yeah. we have calcium in the bones based on that. So yeah. you put it into you. Yeah. 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 There, there, there's no truth. No truth. No truth whatsoever. It, it's, it's, there is, there is a calcium in milk when you measure the milk. When you take it inside, uh, they are finding that you actually get zero. Calcium? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. That's right. Yeah. If you look at it, all the countries where they, they have more milk, the Scandinavian countries, the United States, it is the countries that have more issues with bones. Where in countries where they don't take milk or very little, there are no bone issues. Yeah, like uh, I, I always say, where I come from, if, you, if, you, if, if a little boy climbs on a tree right, and falls, nothing happens to him. But I used to work in a nursing home in America. If, if and a person falls from a chair half, half this, they'll break a hip. <laughs> so you, 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 you can see. <laughs> no. <clears throat> so, yes, sir. That's also due to lack of exercise. Right. Right. That's right. Yeah. Exercise on top of it. Yeah. That's right. So Pastor, yeah. I have a question. So you're yes. telling me that they are deliberately feeding us with that information to get us sick. Not to get you sick. To get money. <laughs> to get money. Yeah. Because if you go to school as a doctor mm -hmm. and you learn that medicine, you have all that information. Yeah. That is in the school, that is in the books, you go out and become a doctor. Yeah. Yeah. They said no. They said it will get you sick. Right. So that is uh, don't give him soy milk because so, unless it's organic, because soy milk is the most GMO food. I think Brian has an answer for you. Right. Right. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. Yeah. There is a statement in the book uh, um, Health Power 
One, one lady doctor says, I knew what I wanted when I went into medical school. I wanted uh, to learn about health. But instead, I became an expert on disease. <clears throat> Have you realized that what they call healthcare is actually disease places, like the hospital? That, that's disease. Uh, it's not health. Uh, and, and the things are lopsided. The things that we, the, it's because of the dairy industry, they have lobbyists in Congress who push so that they don't make any legislation against the dairy industry. Yes, my sister. Not eating what? Um, Overripe, yeah. yeah. Yes. Yes. Right. That that was actually Sister White's statement that that I read. She she says that uh, when the food is is overripe, wilted. Don't use it. Yeah, it's go bad. I'm not sure about the banana bread, though. I don't know. Uh, uh, there are things I don't know. Right. Uh huh. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But, um, what we're saying, if you are consuming bananas on a daily basis, um, make sure that they are not right. overly right to the point that they're lacking. That's right. Because um, you're getting a heavier concentration of sugar. Yeah. yeah. I, I, it, I don't think a banana that's ripe is intrinsically a bad idea. It's just that you shouldn't have too much of too like it's like uh, dried fruits they have too much sugar more than than the fresh ones so uh it should be fine to use banana bread uh, uh, in uh, ho bananas in 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 banana bread amen yes black pepper nutmeg i just a no no I'll tell you, let me tell you a few things, a few no-nos that, that will help you. <clears throat> uh, vinegar is no-no. Ap even apple cider. Even, even apple cider. Yeah. Uh, there, there is, uh, see, there is vinegar in ev everything, basically. Like, when you look at ingredients for bread, you know, bread, you wonder why is vinegar there? <clears throat> Look at the ingredients for bread. You find vinegar. Why? And also, <clears throat> uh, the dressing. You see the salad dressings? Yeah. They have vinegar in there. And, and mayonnaise is full of stuff that we don't want. Um, mayonnaise. Yeah. Uh, um, ketchup. Um, <laughs> ma, <coughs> mustard, <coughs> pickles, all these things you can make at home. Simple, simple recipes. Yeah, and bread is very easy to make. Just the simplest thing, you have the healthiest bread. And if you, if you are, if you are blessed, or if you, if you. Um, can afford it, you can look for inkhorn flour or spelt flour. Those are the better flours to use than the ordinary flour that has been <coughs> uh, changed. 
That's why people have having gut issues because the flour is not good. Yes. It, it's fermented. That that fermentation process is is not good for us. Um, Sister White has a statement on that too. <clears throat> Same thing with soda. Yeah. Soda or baking soda. Yeah. Carbonation in water. I have no idea. Something to look for. Yeah. It's all right. So what if it is used to like wash vegetables and like uh, for washing vegetables you want to use uh, charcoal powder. It will it, it, it do a good job. Yeah. 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 Put a dish. Yeah. Put, put charcoal in there. It will clean them well. Charcoal is one of the best things you can have it. It's good for a lot of things. Yeah. Would you mind like writing the steps? So I can. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, you can. You can see me after. That's right. You, like, um, let me say this. I had bad acid reflux to the point where in, um, my singing voice, and that's why I hardly sing anymore. So, because, you know, um, it destroyed it. And I was taking the medication that you get from the doctor, which um, strips your body of calcium. So I noticed my nails, they were flicking, and I couldn't figure out why. Right on the center of my nails, they just split all the time. So I called my sister and I said, I'm having problems with my nails. She said, Why are you taking it? And I told her, So let me tell you something about those um, and the acid uh, tablets that you get from the doctor. They strip your body of calcium and create a serious problem for you. So I, I was reading that and I think I was keeping the bed and we started talking about cayenne pepper. That was about And I decided that um, we're going to take the cayenne pepper in a glass of water with lemon every morning. And sometimes I put a, a, a teaspoon of honey in there because that's the natural remedy that can save your tissues. And uh, I, have, I, I drank that. My acid reflux is gone. I get tested by it. And for years, I was taking the medication. So I wouldn't tell my Amen. So, Yeah. 
go back to the old days. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. I, I really realize that we are living here by grace. We must do our level best to improve our, our physical food and what we eat. But beyond that, we have no answers right. to give them up there. Amen. Now, before we close, I wanted to tell you one more, one more thing for washing vegetables. You know uh, that uh, hydrogen peroxide? You mix it with water. Yes. You, you dilute it. Yes. And you can put it in a, in a spray, spray, spray bottle. And did you know that thing is, is good for cleansing you? And it, it will help even a cancer patient. It brings alkalinity to your system. So you take a drop. You know, you get a dropper. You know those little droppers like eye drops. Get a dropper. Get just one drop in a glass of water. You drink. <clears throat> and the next day you add another drop. One, two. Two drops. You do, you keep adding until day number 10. Right? And day number 10 or 15, somewhere there. Then you start reducing back. Right? You start reducing the number by one again. Start reducing. It, it will help clean you up. Um, it, it, it's one of the uh, open secrets that, that we can use. Yes, sir. And then her. Yes. Right. Yeah. I I think they are fine. Yeah, I think they are fine. They is just alkaline water. Yes, my sister. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Aha, that's right. Aha. Uh -huh. That's very right. And, and you can't leave that outside for children. If you see hydrogen peroxide, I have to warn you. If you drink a, 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 a cup, a, a sip of hydrogen peroxide, it could kill you. It, 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 it'll burn you, burn you. So you don't want, that's why you have to put one drop it's a very, it can be dangerous. You have to keep it far away from children. But it, it, will, it will help you. Amen? So, <clears throat> may God bless us. Let us uh, stand and, uh, and pray. Elder.